The Life of Judith Leistar by Chloe Garcia. Leistar was born in the early 17th century in a city called Harlem, Netherlands. She is most known for her artworks in the Baroque and Dutch Golden Age periods. Unlike many women artists of the time period, Leistar was not born from a wealthy family. Instead, she was born in a common household that housed eight siblings where her mother was a weaver and her father owned a brewery that was named after their family surname, Leistar. Her surname played quite a role into her identity as an artist. Her surname originates from the word Lodestar, which is a person or thing that serves as an inspiration or guide. She took inspiration from her own surname and implemented a star, the letter J and L for her own initials to create her own unique signature. Being that many women of the time did not receive any credit for their artwork, this is a very unique thing for Lester to do. Given that there is little known knowledge about her artistic schooling, many believe that she has learned from a young age. Dating back to 1628, Leicester was featured in a small book about her hometown that implies her early studies in the art field. And around that time, she would have been 19. Some of her early work is speculated to have been influenced by other Dutch artists she may have had contact with, such as Franz Haas and Franz Peters de Greber. Let us compare both of their work to see the inspirations. This is one of Lester's earlier works dating around to 1630s. Around the same time period, Freber also has a piece that looks very similar to this. I do not believe the subjects are the same person, but I do believe the technique used to create the details are quite similar. Looking closely, you can see that the technique used to design the ruff around the neck is quite delicate but also followed by a very sharp and pointed highlight along the rim. Now looking at Freber's approach, you can notice the similarity in the brush strokes on the collar. Freber's does appear softer, while Lester does have deeper shadows and sharper strokes, it could just further imply that both artists received similar training together or learned from each other. Another main factor that draws these two paintings together is the attention to detail along the sleeves. It appears that she might have also been influenced by working with Franz Hans while in Harlem. Franz Hals, the lute player, came out during her young teens and could have been a big influence in her art career. Compared to the previous images, her understanding of light, colors, and shadows seems to be lacking and seems to be not as polished as it could be. The balance of color does seem slightly off, and the only reason that this is evident is because we get to see her collab with Hals, which shows her improved understanding of shadows and color theory. I believe that by working on this piece, it really inspired Lester because after learning with Howells, she goes on to capture similar moments that involve documenting the joy people have playing instruments and with their family and with their friends. Other inspirations around this time could have been John Steen, Caravaggio, even her husband, John Means Monolier, which we will discuss shortly. Lester is also famously known for her beautiful still lives. This one particular still life gives a lot of insight into her life as a married woman. The most predominant flower is the white lily, which symbolizes purity. Along with the orange and red flowers can symbolize her transition from the unmarried state into love. By the time frame of this painting, she would have been married for 18 years with her husband. The combination of flowers could portray the passion she once had for her marriage that has dwindled with time as her solo career left with the marriage. Another major use of symbolism for the Dutch was the use of fruits, shells, and butterflies. Fruits and shells just show travel and trade since most of them were not obtained in the area nearby. Could represent the amount of freedom Chester has or the amount of freedom she feels when traveling or receiving gifts from traveling. Overall, this painting shows that even though marriage is not exactly what she's expected, she has obtained many exotic and beautiful things that would seem to make her happy and joyous throughout her time here. Jester did have four children, but only two of them actually lived past the teenage years. Lastly, at the very peak of her career, she was admitted into the Guild of St. Luke. Since almost every city in Europe had their own patron saint, the guild was named after St. Luke, who was the very first person to draw Mary, therefore making himself the patron saint of art. 
Guilds were used to harness skills in certain areas, and for this one in particular, it was used to harness the skills in the arts. It was mainly prestigious and mainly consisted of men, but only two women were admitted, one being Lester. Her art career may have been short, but she has made history of being one of the only women who was not rich of the time to still have her name documented on her own artworks. She proves that even if her time period was not so open to women artists, that if harnessed, your hard work will not go unnoticed. She shows how passion transcends gender and how this has been very much so implemented in our lifestyles today.